After lying silent for nearly 12,000 years, a volcano in northeastern Ethiopia has suddenly woken up. On November 23rd, the highly Gubi volcano erupted, its first known eruption in thousands of years. But what made headlines around the world was not flowing rivers of lava. It was the massive dark plume of ash that shot thousands of feet into the sky and travelled across continents, even reaching cities as far away as India's capital Delhi. This rare and powerful eruption has disrupted flights and raised questions about volcanic monitoring. The incident shows the world just how connected our planet's systems really are. First, understand the location. Haile Gubi sits in the Ethiopia's Afar region, a remote desert area where two tectonic plates slowly pull apart. It rises about 500 meters above the landscape and lies close to the well-known Eta El volcanic range. According to the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, Ethiopia has around 58 known volcanoes, and 43 of them, including Haile Gubi, have not erupted during the entire Holocene period, which began nearly 12,000 years ago. Because this volcano had not shown any clear activity in recorded history, many scientists believed it was dormant or perhaps even extinct. This is why the eruption came as a surprise. There were no confirmed signs like increased ground heat, swelling of land, rising steam or small earthquakes. These are the signals that usually help experts predict volcanic activity. Volcanic eruption is not new in the Afar in general. But for this specific volcano, uh, Haile Gubi, uh, we never had any record at all. So a volcano will be called active if it erupts in the last 10,000 years. So there is no record at all for this volcanic eruption and to classify it as a Holocene volcano. That's because either it is ended, it is inactive, or maybe it's so remote in, in the upper deserts that probably it might have some activity in the past, but never noticed or never recorded. Now let's understand why this eruption looked different. Every volcano behaves differently based on what lies beneath it. The character of an eruption is shaped mainly by two things. First, how sticky the magma is. And second, how much gas is trapped inside it. If the magma is low in silica, it becomes runny. In such cases, gases can escape easily. These eruptions are gentler. Lava flows out quietly, like what we often see in Hawaii. But if magma is rich in silica, it becomes thick and sticky. Gas stays trapped inside, building pressure like a sealed bottle being shaken. When it bursts, the explosion sends ash, smoke and fragmented rock high into the air. Haile Gubi's eruption was the explosive kind. Instead of glowing lava, it released a massive column of fine ash and gaseous material. Scientists call it volcanic ash plume. This plume rose to heights of 10 to 12 kilometers, exactly where commercial aircraft fly. Once the volcano erupted, strong eastward winds took over. They carried the ash from Ethiopia across the Red Sea, then over to Yemen, Oman, Pakistan, India, and even up to parts of China. This is extremely rare. Only a handful of eruptions in modern history have spread ash so widely. But when it happens, air travel becomes immediately vulnerable because the ash was drifting at altitudes of 8.5 to 15 kilometers above sea level. It crossed the same routes used by hundreds of international flights every day. India's aviation regulator, DGCA, quickly issued warnings. Several flights were cancelled, delayed or rerouted with airlines told to strictly avoid affected areas. Pilots were asked to report any unusual engine behavior, smells or signs of contamination. Now let's understand why volcanic ash is dangerous for aircraft. Volcanic ash may look like smoke, but it is much more dangerous. 
It is made of tiny sharp particles of rock and glass. These particles are light enough to float in the air, yet abrasive enough to damage aircraft systems. When ash enters a jet engine, the intense heat can melt into glassy material that sticks to engine parts, choking air flow. The ash can scratch cockpit windows. This reduces visibility and makes landing unsafe. Ash can disrupt sensors and instruments and can interfere with readings. Ash also contaminates airports. Ash settling on runways reduces visibility and makes operations risky. Because of these dangers, experts say, airlines cannot afford to take chances. This is always obvious, by the way. The, you, if there is a volcanic uh, eruption in the flight route of airlines, it can be dangerous for the aircraft because uh, there's combustion in the air. The airplane takes oxygen or air to combust its uh, fuel and uh, for the safety of the passengers. So you have to advise. You shouldn't take a risk in whatever the amount could be. Aviation authorities classify ash contamination into three levels, low, medium and high. But in this case, the exact level was not immediately known. Measuring ash concentration requires advanced deployment of sensors and instruments, something impossible during a sudden and unexpected eruption like this one. This was not just about aircraft safety. Volcanic ash can also temporarily affect satellite communication, which is essential for modern navigation systems. The response showed how even a single volcanic eruption thousands of kilometers away can disrupt global aviation within hours. The Afar region is one of Earth's most active geological zones where tectonic plates slowly tear apart the continent. Studying this eruption may offer new insights into how ancient volcanoes behave and how future eruptions can be predicted with better accuracy. That's all in this edition of Connecting the Dots. We will see you next week with more raging issues. Until then, it's a goodbye from all of us in the Delhi newsroom. This is Munman Bhattacharya signing off. Take care and stay safe.